Good morning, Foundry Church. Welcome to another virtual shakeout. I hope you guys all had a really great weekend um, enjoying Easter. Um, and if some of you guys are on spring break, I hope that's been going well as well. So today we're going to jump back into the book of Revelations. We're going to kind of analyze and talk about what this part of the story means. But first, I'm going to have you guys put on your thinking caps at home. So let's all think of a time where we messed up big time. So an example could be you were drawing something and you put in a line that you just feel like ruined the whole picture. You wish you could have an undo button and just undo that whole thing. Or maybe you said something unkind to a friend or family member and it really hurt their feelings and you wish you could just take it back. Another example could be you took a test at school that you didn't do very good on and you wish you could just undo it and try again and get a better grade. So some of those feelings are things that exist because of sin. So sadness, crying, pain, and death, those all exist because of sin. But when Jesus returns, he will undo all of those things. So on another note, can you think of something that you really liked that got broken? I remember when I was really little, I had this beautiful porcelain piggy bank. It was hand painted. Uh, it had flowers all over it, and when you put a penny or a quarter or any coin on top, it had a little sensor that would sing a song to you, and it was my favorite thing in the whole world. I would always look all over the house for, like, spare change just so I could hear it play a little song. But I remember when my sister was a newborn baby, we shared a room, um, and when she was maybe a little over a year old, I remember she knocked it off my dresser and shattered it all over the ground and I was heartbroken. So we tried to put it back together and maybe take some super glue and see if we could fit the pieces together but it was too broken and we couldn't fix it and restore it back to his original position. But imagine if you could fix something and make it good as new. Imagine if you could take something and fix it and make it as good as it was before. So our world is broken by sin, but we'll see today in our Bible story that Jesus will make all things new. I know it's been a little while, but let's think and see if we can remember our big picture question. So our question, remember, is what will happen when Jesus returns? Take a second to think on that. Think all the way back two weeks ago now. Remember, it's Jesus will destroy all evil and make things new. So our big picture question and answer actually tells us a little bit about what we're going to learn in today's Bible story. So remember, we are learning each week about one story in the Bible. And as you might remember, all of the stories in the Bible fit together to tell one big story. And that's the story of how God rescues sinners through his son, Jesus Christ. So before Palm Sunday and Easter, we've heard some stories about the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation. So John had a vision of Jesus and saw what will happen before the end of time. Um, our story today is called Jesus Will Return, and we believe that by faith. Let's check it out. So our story today comes from the book of Revelations, remember, and it's chapter 21 through 22. Um, so if you guys want to pull it open in your Bibles or just listen along as I read to you guys. Again, our story is called Jesus Will Return. John had a vision of heaven. He heard a large crowd of people praising God and rejoicing. John wrote about what he saw. John saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth were gone. He also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. He heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God will live with his people. They will be his people and he will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will no longer exist. Sadness, crying, and pain will no longer exist. One of the angels carried John to a great and high mountain. The angel showed John the holy city. It was shining with God's glory. The foundations of the city wall had every type of precious stone. The city was made with pure gold as clear as glass. 
John did not see a temple in the city because the Lord and the Lamb were the city's temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it. The glory of God gives light to the city and there is no darkness. The city is safe and clean. Nothing is unclean in the city and no one will do wrong things in the city. Only those whose names are in the Lamb's book of life will enter the city. The angel showed John the river of living water. It sparkled like crystal and flowed from God's throne down the middle of the wide city street. The tree of life was on both sides of the river and it produced 12 kinds of fruit. God's throne will be in the city. God's servants will see his face and they will worship him. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Jesus said, listen, I am coming soon. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Jesus is the one who says that all of these things will happen. He is coming soon. All right, so we can hear in today's Bible story that Jesus promised to come back to earth soon. So when Jesus returns, those who trust in Jesus will be with him and enjoy him forever. God will undo every bad thing caused by sin. No more death, no more pain, no more tears. Jesus is making everything new. So in the last few chapters of the Bible, John wrote about what he saw in his vision of heaven. Can you remember what new places John saw? He saw a new heaven and a new earth. So John wrote about the beauty of the new city, or the new Jerusalem, and John tried to describe what he saw. Do you remember some of the things about what John described? Remember, it was a very shiny city. It was lit up by God's grace. It had a gold path, and it was clear like glass. Um, the walls of the city were lined with precious stones. There was a tree of life with 12 kinds of fruit. Remember, John said God's glory will light up the city. So there's no need for... Let's see, what are the two things that light up in the sky? The sun and the moon, right? So because of God's glory, there's no need for a sun in this city. So there's no darkness at all, and nothing evil will ever come into the city. There's no sadness, no crying, and no pain. Um, what did Jesus say about his return? He said, I am coming soon. Even with John's descriptions, we still can't imagine exactly what heaven will be like, but we know that Jesus will be there and Jesus will destroy all evil and make all things new. This is the good news that we should share with everyone. We want everyone to be a part of God's family and share the joy in knowing Jesus Christ and that he died for us on the cross to save us from our sins and make everything new. So speaking of making all things new, let's see if you can rewind back to before Easter and think about what our key passage is. It's from the book of Revelation. It's Revelation chapter 21, verse 5. And it was, He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. For a few weeks now, we've been working on memorizing this verse, um, and after Jesus said these words, he told John to write them down because they are faithful and true. Everything in the Bible is true, and we believe by faith that Jesus will return. Let's practice saying that again. I'm going to say it first, then you guys are going to say it with me, and I want to hear you guys try to say it all by yourselves. So, he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. All right, one more time with me. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. All right, now let's hear you guys try and say it. All right, great job, guys. You did an excellent job saying that verse with me. Let's remember, this is not just a verse to memorize, but this is something that's true. So Jesus is seated on the throne, and he's the one making everything new because of his sacrifice on the cross. So let's kind of remember what this chapter was about. So remember, it was John telling us some things about what heaven may be like. 
and we remember we saw the streets of gold they were clear like glass we saw the wall around the city um, and it was had and it had precious stones on it there was a tree of life there was a river there was no darkness at all in the city no sin no sadness no death um, it was all lit up by God's greatness and holiness. So this is sort of a vision what heaven may be like. While it's not exactly what it looks like, it can kind of give us a glimpse into what we might think it looks like. So an activity I want you guys to try out at home is take some crayons or markers or colored pencils or whatever you prefer drawing with. And based on the descriptions given in today's Bible story, draw a picture of what you think heaven looks like. So you can get that street of gold in there, you can draw the big beautiful tree of life, or the river going down the middle of the street. Just try your best to illustrate what John was describing to us. Before I end today's lesson, I'm going to take a moment to pray for you guys at home. So let's fold our hands, close our eyes, and bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so, so amazed with your grace and your mercy. We thank you so much that you sent your Son down on earth to die on the cross for our sins, even though he was perfect and sinless and blameless. Um, we thank you for that amazing sacrifice so that we may be able to come and live with you in heaven and worship you, Lord. Um, we pray that we would strive each day to be more and more like you, Lord, um, and to treat others as Jesus treated others. Um, Lord, I pray for our friends at home that they're all doing safe in this time, um, that they're staying healthy and enjoying time with their families. Lord, I just pray that our friends at home would soak up the knowledge from today's lesson and use it and apply it in their daily lives. Um, in your name we pray, amen. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another virtual shakeout. I will see you again next week. Bye.